What's up everybody, Brett here, back with more Kingdom Rush. This is episode 5, and if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Last episode we left off, I had finished Icewind Pass. I had only gotten two stars, I made a few tactical errors, which in my opinion were kind of like noob mistakes, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that again. Uh, I went back and did it, did it first try, fairly easy. Um, the change to my strategy was I didn't focus so hard on these towers here at the start and I just put most of my resources back here and I didn't really divide it until the later waves where I added some good uh, arcane towers that were able to one-shot trolls so that was kind of my general strategy and then two groups of barbarians here behind some paladins with the ability to throw axes we're able to do a lot of damage. So let's just uh, jump into the iron challenge. You'll see I do have the star from, from finishing that. And I think we're going to bring Malik Hammer Fury as our hero in this upcoming map. So let's not forget to select him. Uh, let's see. Iron mode. Upgrades level 4. No archer towers. No magic towers. All right, let's jump in and we want to knock this out first I think before we move on because if we are able to do both of these challenge maps we'll have three stars which is enough to unlock another upgrade before we move on. So let's see we have some flying units here. Hmm, okay. And bring in some marauders. Okay. So I think these are very powerful spots. And I haven't attempted this yet. And I think what we're going to want to do is get some barbarians. We only have this one wizard tower for these gargoyles. So we either want to upgrade this all the way. Or try and get ourselves some barbarians with throwing axes and we're barely able to get that let's see if this is a winning strategy may or may not be I don't know now let's reinforce the bottom here and if I remember right you really want to be careful their range on the barbarians isn't huge but it's enough that they can safely stand behind these other squishier guys and still throw but if you put them too close they'll engage in melee and you'll miss out on their ranged attacks and the upgrades here just do a lot more damage and they can hit flying which is why I think they're most certainly the go-to guys here and let's get another group stack them on top of this group and we'll upgrade them as soon as possible I think this is a good time to use our rain of fire get rid of that big guy clear up some of this chaff And at some point we might want to upgrade one of these Dwarven Artillery pieces. But for right now we almost have second Barbarians. We could even upgrade, get this here and make another group of Barbarians. I was thinking of saving this for another Dwarven Artillery piece. Oh no, we're leaking. These guys back here. Oh, and they're too slow. Lame. Okay, let's try that again. I don't think that was a bad strategy. I think we were very close. Let's maybe try a little bit different. And we're going to rush the barbarians with throwing axes again. And we're 
we're gonna more quickly get to these these barbarians in the back line and let's see if that works hopefully we still have enough splash damage to help us take out the bottom wave and these occasional wards might be worth upgrading the wizard tower as well because right now it's not quite two shotting them which is a problem one upgrade and it should be able to consistently two shot them so it won't be wasting an extra shot every every enemy and it's not that expensive I, I think we can we can do that without much difficulty and we're gonna wait to rain a fire until this guy gets into this blob here and let's upgrade it as soon as we can so there we go two shots much more efficient We'll rain of fire here. Let him stand in the burning. And I don't think we upgrade this past that. Once you upgrade it, the odds of him, of this tower one-shotting these guys is pretty high once upgraded. That might be worth considering. Also, these little wolves don't have magic resistance. It's only the upgraded versions that do, so. And this is what I mean about keeping them at a correct distance, because they... Upgrade. If they're not far enough back, they'll just engage in melee. And we don't have the gold, unfortunately. Can we pull this back? No, we're still gonna leak. No, we're not leaking. We barely, barely edged that one out. Maybe the secret is just to get all the barbarians and spread them out so that if the front is engaged, because they can't, they can't, they don't seem to be able to throw right above themselves. They either have to be here in front or behind them. Our placement is kind of all over the place. And we'll be looking to wave a rain of fire here in a second if needed. I want to make sure they all have the ability to hit air. We don't necessarily need to upgrade it. But once these guys engage here, I think we'll, we'll get them standing in the fire. There we go. Let's get that one in the impact damage and they'll both stand in fire. Yeah, ass barbarians. Good strategy. Probably could have made those guys into paladins. Just have them be a front line for all the ranged here. Let's stay on theme. Could even give the front line guys whirlwind attacks. Ranged might not be very good on the whoever's standing in the front. Because they're not going to be using their range, they're just going to constantly be in melee. That's a lot of axes. Let's 
get even more. Wait to hit 200 once again. And they're all staggered just so that if one gets engaged on, they're not all engaged in melee. If they're engaged in melee, then this 200 gold upgrade is essentially useless. Let's get one level of whirlwind here so they can help clear out this ground. Shaft. That's the word I was looking for. And I think we can safely upgrade this. And it'll get the occasional one shot. And that'll just be much more efficient. Less flyers overhead means these guys can focus their axes on the ground units. And we can even begin to upgrade one of our dwarven towers. We'll upgrade both of them. This level's almost over, it seems. I think we found the, the secret sauce to, to getting through this. Yeah, these guys just do so much damage. And you can upgrade their damage. Giving them two axes. But I always found they were most useful as ranged. Just because the paladins take the place of a frontline unit quite solidly. And we need one more, one more star to get one of these abilities. This might be worth it just because it, it even further reduces rain of fire. It's cool down by 10. That's huge. And having this be, having its cost reduced is great. Just checking out these upgrades here. This is great in tandem with these upgrades. And my previous playthroughs of this game, I want to say I pretty often rushed this combination. Once these guys have the ability to throw their spears, that is quite good. Let's uh let's finish this off. Hopefully you guys aren't tired of this level. But by the time I'm done, I usually feel like I've I've got a something of a mastery over the level. Trolls, wolves, and spiders. Okay. So I think this is too solid to pass up. And this is just kind of the perfect spot for a barracks. You really can't go wrong on a level like this. Almost every single plot is going to be a solid placement. You don't want to underestimate the trolls or the amount of spiders that could possibly come our way. We used this guy in the last video. He is very strong but very expensive and once range trolls start coming in, they just kind of burst him down. Even though he has 2500 health, they do kill him and I'm not sure that if they kill him whether or not you get him back. I don't think you do. So we don't want to waste. We don't want to waste 400 gold plus a rain of fire to get him out. I don't think. And we'll call these guys. See how we do. And I think we're going to plan to get barbarians once again in this back line. Front line will be paladins, back line barbarians with axes. And we'll hope that these two are enough to help us out. Let's upgrade these three just to make sure that we don't leak on these flying waves. 
and then we'll prioritize getting our barbarians with their throwing axes. Didn't expect to get flyers down here. Hopefully we don't leak. I think we're just gonna make it. Very close. Calling early just to get the cooldown. I was hoping to nuke these guys, but it's still... gonna leak. Yeah, just a second too slow. Hmm. Hmm. That was a bit too hectic. I think this is definitely correct. I'm not worried about this. Part of the build. I also think these towers are fine. to the axes I feel like or else we're just gonna have a hard time once again with the flyers and maybe we don't call early unless it's very clear that we can make that work I think we certainly need more bodies up here these trolls so that our archers aren't firing at anything but these guys and let's hold them up give our archers more time to fire Felt like I had to upgrade that to make sure we don't leak here, but we may still leak. Ah, uh, that's so rough. And they're gonna be out of range. Man. Try something very different and go with something more like this. See how this looks. One of these to help control any kind of AoE needs that we have, but enough ground units to clog this up long enough for our single target damage to begin to do its work. 
I think we need to upgrade this and these guys at least once. And I think we have to call early or else we just won't have the goal to make this work. Make sure our front line is at least tough enough to stand here for a minute. Trolls are just sucking up all of our DPS. Which I thought would be fixed by placing these guys here. But maybe even this is a bad call. Placing this here wasn't a big deal. We're going to get our gold back. When we sell it. We're only missing out on a small portion. Let's call early just so we can upgrade this. spreading very thin and we're just not getting the DPS we need to burst these guys down. I'm going very wide, but I feel like that's kind of what I have to do. Let's, I don't want to bore you guys to death, and I can try that in my spare time and, and I'll probably get it. Um, let's, let's go to the next level here and maybe we can reset. And see if we can't take advantage of those two stars. Let's get everything at least tier 3, and then we can look to see if we want something else. And we have 8. these let's let's do that and let's bring Malik so here we go Stormcloud Temple brand new level I somewhat remember this one uh, should be fun okay arriving at the Stormcloud Temple has been the best thing to happen to us in days the Stormcloud sorcerers will now be at your command general and they can open a portal straight to Valor duel however we must provide them with a defense while they complete their spell Something abominable is approaching, and the men are extremely nervous, so hint, hint. Not too subtle there, but we do get a new tower, so the sorcerer. Sorcerers handle forces that are close to darkness, weaving spells that temporarily lower enemy armor and deal damage. Okay. So, lowers their armor. That's worth noting. This, in conjunction with, let's say, archer towers can allow you to burst down very heavily armored units that traditionally you wouldn't be able to like black knights and I think we're probably gonna get a lot of black knights here so I think this is the important thing to note on this map is the difference in waves so coming from the top are the trolls and from the bottom will be bandits brigands and I think black knights So Malik, okay. Can't touch this. So that's that's important because the bottom wave is going to have armor and the top wave will not. And I think very key here is how where we're going to choose to defend, and keeping them separate is also I think important. And it's also good to note that there is a cave entrance here. And I do think that there's something interactive with this here that I'm just not remembering. So maybe in the beginning we, we make kind of a focus around this, these two central points. And as, as we get the gold, we spread out to kind of help keep the armor from mixing with the region. And I think that sounds like a solid plan. This 
will probably be our best bet for a backline protection. And this might as well also be another barracks. Let's get ourselves a bombard. These are also very important because they're going to touch every single wave that comes through, whereas these might not. But a tower here is going to hit this and this, so nothing will get by them. Um, I'm debating here whether or not we kind of rush a ranger tower with poison and the binds, Wrath of the Forest. Uh, the range here will make it so that it hits this entire grouping, and then we put something like uh, our new mage tower here and reduce armor before they get to these and I think that's going to be fine we can even add two more of those towers here and I want to trust that the range on those towers is enough to cover here and I hope so so let's put these guys there and let's put archer tower here mage tower there so let's upgrade and let's, let's see what that does and he does some Mr. T references and there's MC Hammer so <laughs> now let's explode this goat for good luck. Not give these these bandits any targets for their really high damage. And kill them before they get to us. And we'll just feel it out. You know, it's my first time doing this in years. Let's call them early. We want to get a little bit of a mistake there. We could have got him in on this early fight got him to level 2 level 3 faster and I think we need to do that he has a huge HP pool I don't think we need to be that worried about him getting burst down let's get some basic footmen there and I think we should call early and upgrade these these are more important than these their their coverage is just better And the fire on the ground is excellent versus the wolves. Maybe look to upgrade that quickly. But here we already have some flyers. So we'll see how Malik does here. I really value uh, having a hero with the ability to hit the air. We'll call them early just to get the gold, because I, I think we'll be able to clear these guys out before they get here. We need to get rid of this troll. He's soaking up a ton of our range damage. Call these guys early. There's a bit of a mistake summoning there, but uh, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too bad. And they might do something like overload one side, and then like this wave, they might not send anything. But they'll send a lot down this particular path. But I think getting, yeah, this ranger's hideout is going to be excellent here. And then maybe some marksman towers down here. They'll probably be able to hit this. Yeah, Malik... We didn't get him in on this fighting as early as we could have, so he's suffering a bit. We want to get him at least to level 3, and there we go. He uses his first ability. It's like a ground slam, and that's great. Make sure we're backing him up, because he does have a lot of health, but I don't think he has... He only has low armor. early for the, the gold and the summons. Once again, misplaced. 
They're only coming from this direction. We could have had two more guys right here. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a big deal. Let's get that. Help us burn these guys down. And you'll notice our uh, our reinforcements are now armored and they do pretty good damage. So we're going to drop our melee guys right on top of these ranged ones. Allow them to clump up so we can do that. And we're going to remember to do this correctly here. And let's get the sorcerers. They don't do nearly as much damage as the arcane wizards do. And we no longer have the the upgrade that increases their damage but they do lower the armor of these dark knights so right now they're at high armor and we'll see what that lowers it to let's kill those guys New enemy. Let's check it out. Dark Slayer. Okay. Claimed by darkness, slayers are the bane of anyone standing in their way. Great armor. Very tough, slow speed. So, high armor as well. Unfortunately, Malik is still only level 3. But we do have this tower now. And I totally forgot what their abilities were. And I love their abilities. Um, they have summon elementals which on a map like this where it's difficult to find good positions to place barracks they're gonna give us another obstacle to put in the path of these guys and we can summon a bit early once again want to saturate Malik with uh, reinforcements another good that's a big AoE stun that was pretty cool don't want him to die but we want to saturate him with other units because he even though he has good HP he doesn't have good armor Let's, uh, let's get one of these and use it to block up the path and then we can start dropping our reinforcements there. Let's send Malik up here to fight trolls. And you can... I don't know if you eventually get two. I don't quite remember. But placing several of these towers here might be a good idea. Let's upgrade the one we have first. Call this wave early. And let's get just a ton of elementals blocking these waves for us. So another new enemy, Rocket Riders. They follow their Dark Lord's will wherever they go, flying average speed, and they do have a boost. So that's worth noting. This is rough. And this is where having a ranged lord comes in handy. Because I have a feeling we're going to leak here if we don't. Okay, very close. It's hammer time. Just try and get his levels up. I don't know if he ends up getting to medium armor. But high HP without good armor on Malik is rough. And that goes for most video game characters. You know, when you have high HP but you don't have like the armor to back it up, that's a pretty common uh, stat game you end up playing. If you play any of you guys out there play play MOBAs, you know, if you like say you play Dota 2, if you're building a an item set just to max out your HP pool, and your HP pool can be huge, but you'll take a ton of damage. So to really maximize that HP, you need the armor to back it up. Let's call these guys early. They're going to come from the top. We're not too scared of that. It might be worth it at this point to block up this path here. Get them as far down as possible so that they catch the units that are coming from there. But we need some damage. And we're going to... Polymorphing? Turning units like this into sheep? 
is a very powerful ability that we're going to look to take advantage of. And these elementals, we can take a second to look at their stats. I mean, they're almost as strong as Malik is. He finally gets to level 5. And that's kind of the problem with non-tanky melee heroes on all three of these games. Is that they, they have trouble staying engaged. You gotta really give them a lot of units to stand with. And we might look to nuke them here. May also be worth it to use this backline position to help reinforce just the numbers. We can upgrade them here, upgrade them here. We could stand this guy right on top of the other. And Polymorph is very good against these types of enemies. get some marksmen. I don't like these guys. Their turbo engages as soon as they get hit. So we want them to get hit as soon as possible so that they lose the turbo and then take the damage. Oh, we might leak here. Okay. Not the worst. It's Gonna get some more musketeers here, I think. Even though we probably would have just been fine making a ton of these towers, or even the arcane towers. But they do work together quite nicely. be about time to start considering polymorph or even the poison. They're just regening so quickly. Okay, let's take him out of danger let him regen. I think we're doing fine. Double Wrath of the Forest here. Let's look to get some Paladin and uh, Berserkers there. Wow, we're actually almost done with this level, I just realized. And that's another thing I love about this game, is there are different play styles. You know, getting the elemental, favoring the elemental over, let's say, polymorph, is not necessarily incorrect or correct. It really just comes down to how you want to play. Polymorph here would, would just be destroying these guys. They get turned into sheep, and then they would get one shot by the musketeers. So there's certainly more than one way to play this level. And I don't think any way is wrong. So here we go, we have a boss character. 
And there's no way to interact with this. I could have sworn there was a uh, some interactive element to this level. But I could certainly be wrong. So here... Okay, this boss can take out our towers. And he ate all of our guys. And he ate Malik, so... Very dangerous. Let's get our guys out of there. And we're slowing him down. If he wants to sit there and eat, we're fine with that. He has no armor, so our arcane tower here is going to do good damage. And from now on, we will keep our berserkers far enough away. That they can throw their axes, but he doesn't hit them. Well, let's bring Malik down here. Getting him continuously eaten might not be the best strategy. He has 11,000 HP and he one-shots ground units, but I think we got him. Not too bad. I'm curious what his health is on veteran mode. It's probably significantly more. Achievement unlocked. Is he dead yet? Awesome. So, three stars. And we can go about unlocking... Precision is so good, dealing double damage. And without this upgrade, the Dwarven Towers are just so expensive. You notice we didn't even upgrade it till late. And if I could go back and change my build at all, I just wouldn't build it. I don't think it was necessary to have that kind of AoE. Probably we just would have gotten another one of those Sorcerer Towers with the Golems. And I think if you focus on the Sorcerer Towers with the Golems on that map, you're going to have an easy time. Let's just grab that for the sake of efficiency. And Malik, I'm sorry, but I don't think he was very good. And I had a chance, I used this guy because I had never used him before, so I used him off camera um, doing the heroic mode of the Gold Step Mines. And he's pretty great. Um, I was very curious about his speed here being maxed out and my experience with the games told me that he probably could teleport and he can so that's a cool little feature of a lot of the mage heroes that you get and his abilities were quite solid so let's see what the challenges are here let's look at our upgrades we can get up to tier four that's fine and let's see if we can knock out maybe the Iron Challenge. And the Iron Challenge is demanding that we only use Sorcerer Towers. Or our Wizard Towers. Let's try that out. And it gives us a ton of them. Cool. And these guys are eating the big Yeti. So here we need the armor reduction. And here we need the ability to burst these guys down. So, and this is where the duality of the map becomes very important. And also the fact that this, these two uh, plots here do hit every single unit that passes by. So, we're going to mix and match. But for the most part, I think we're going to rely on the sorcerers for the ability to summon elementals to help us block. And I mean, they don't just block, they do serious damage, so... We're gonna prioritize this one as well, just because it uh, 
it's going to give us the ability to hit our final back line. And the Arcane Wizard Tower does have better range. And they're doing great. This could end up being very easy or very challenging. Had I looked at this beforehand, I certainly would have gotten the upgrade. Instead of getting the Dwarven Artillery, I would have increased the attack damage on these guys. And if we end up failing, I will certainly go and do that. And this is such a key position. I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to build here instead of just upgrading what they've already given me. It's going to make this stronger, and if we leak, we'll have the option of catching them with this. We can make it another arcane wizard tower. And I think that's fine. They are better against the trolls, but we will want to put an elemental here at some point. Right now they're just sending these generic guys after us and we're clearing them pretty efficiently but I have a feeling soon we're gonna start getting the much more dangerous versions of these guys once again we'll prioritize the, the plots that allow us to reach both sets of waves and I'll get the arcane here purely for range purposes and we'll do the same here if we could sell these I would but they are if you'll look here they give you zero gold because they, they are your starting towers. I want to quickly upgrade this so that it's not useless. And once this is fully upgraded it'll be shooting at this wave. And that'll be quite strong. We can just use this. I don't think we're actually in fear of leaking. So we're going pretty heavy quantity over quality here. We're not getting these upgrades. And teleport is also very strong on a level like this. So we can start getting our beefy boys here. Let's make sure we have the damage up top to kill these guys. They can be quite scary, and I think we'll start dropping Reigns of Fire at the top. Still no armor, so we'll value the higher DPS, better range. And we'll get ourselves a guy up here, and we'll get another guy here and put him there. That's pretty good coverage. And I kind of want to upgrade these guys just to check out their, their upgrades. But also, I want to make sure you guys get to at least see a single polymorph. And you're not just not getting to check out the, uh, the upgrades because I'm a little bit biased towards one particular set. 
So let's get those. Polymorph very strong here as well. Never did check out, so they get lower to medium armor. So whatever your armor is, you get lowered by one tier, it looks like. And they got, that guy got turned into a sheep and then instantly nuked. And getting teleport here on these two particular towers, as soon as anyone gets within range, they're just going to get knocked back. And getting teleport here as well will be very strong. They might just never make it past this point once you get enough teleport. This increases the number of enemies teleported. Very strong. Anything that buys time for your special abilities. Wow, it teleports them pretty far too. Yeah, that's quite solid. And let's upgrade uh, one of our giants here all the way, just so we can look at how strong he is. So 800 as opposed to 500. 50 to 70 damage as opposed to 20 to 40, so that's a pretty big increase. And then medium armor as opposed to low. So not bad. Let's just get a ton of teleportation. And we can get another sorcerer here to help spread around that lower armor. And I think we're reaching the end here. Well, here come the big boys, the Dark Slayers. We can get another elemental here to back up this guy. And we could even get some death rays on maybe these three. That probably won't pay for itself at this point, but I think that's fine. That's how that's how I would build it going forward. Turn into a sheep, teleport it back. We should start seeing some of these death rays going off. And I just realized he says Avada Kedavra, that's a Harry Potter reference. Pretty sweet. Use the magic damage on these guys. It's pretty effective against them. We can death ray him, death ray him. So that was pretty fun. And he says, do or do not, there is no try. So that's Star Wars. So very cool. So this is the upgrade I was talking about. Increases wizards attack damage. That would have been great to have there, obviously. This was totally useless. But let's see. I still have a few minutes left of this video. We're, not, we're almost at an hour, but not quite. So I can always try the heroic mode on here. And I could have sworn this was somehow interactive. Um, maybe it's on this heroic mode. Is there something I'm missing? I could have sworn there was a way, like, little sorcerers stood here and did some kind of channeling or something. I could very easily be confusing that with another level. Um, hmm. Or that there was an upgrade you could do here that allowed you to buy these guys and they did some kind of, like, map-wide Overwatch death ray thing? Hmm. Let's see what we're getting here. Trolls, wolves, dark knights. Okay. So, dwarven bombards, I think, are out of out of the picture. It's not necessary. Let's instead get ourselves a mage tower, an archer tower, and another mage tower. 
Archer Mage. Okay. So they gave us a ton of gold. And I think we can get ourselves an elemental and place him here. Let's make sure these guys are strong enough to fight. And we'll use the rest just to upgrade these. Looking to get ranger towers. And we should be fine. Two barracks with a golem with our reinforcements should be enough to block this area up. This is the, the focal point of all of our DPS, this spot right here. All of these units can hit. All of these towers, rather, can hit. So that's what we're going to do. And we do want to make sure we're lowering these guys' armor. And we certainly want to drop fire whenever we're able to group them. So that's fine. That did that did a good good amount of damage. This might be another case of it's just a good idea to spam the sorcerer mages. They're just so effective, but their attack their attack speed is super slow. So you don't want to rely on them for your main source of damage. They're going to lower the armor so that a fast firing tower like the ranger hideout, even though its damage is low, it's going to amplify it whenever it's shooting against these types of units, or the bandits, or the brigands rather here with their medium armor. Let's get another ranger's hideout as soon as we can. And we can move our elemental whenever he's not being used. We don't want him just standing there, that's just a waste. He is very slow though, so we have to keep that in mind if we're trying to like move him on the fly. That's not going to be effective. Holding our reign of fire here until we can snatch up some of these dark knights, catch them in that. Look to upgrade our wizard tower. And as soon as we get them to blob up, we'll do this, kill most of them, summon, call these guys early, and then summon again. And we can get another sorcerer mage, and maybe get another elemental. Might be worth it to get some paladins here. Or just to continue upgrading this tower. We will need as much damage as we can to focus down a unit like that. We just don't want to leak to some like silly wolves or something. That would be bad. So let's get our boy out here. Make sure the enemies stay here, continue taking damage. And we'll probably get an arcane wizard here. The damage is just so huge. They do have a slower rate of fire than the sorcerer mages. You'll notice these are very slow as opposed to just slow here. So that's worth noting. Pick up some musketeer garrisons. Don't want to leak to stupid wolves. Let's just get rid of them. Get our musketeers online. 
Having two of these is pretty strong. They have slow firing, but good, well, extreme range and then very good damage. Not focusing too much on the upgrades as opposed to just getting out high damage dealing towers. Don't want to leak here. Okay, killing one of those guys was good. Very quickly upgrade. And we need this fire. We need it bad. And are we going to get it? We got to bring these guys back. We got to summon early because we need the, the gold here. Can we stop them? Oh my god. Are we going to leak here? They're so low. One of them is near death. We need, we need something stronger here. Whew, I was sweating on that one. Let's get those axes. They'll help us on flyers. And they'll stand behind the paladins and do good damage. We can call early. Yeah, I was, I was clinched pretty tight on that one. get some poison. The poison is very strong. It ends up doing almost, I mean, it does as much damage as the tower itself. Without the poison, this tower is quite weak. And another elemental here would be great. Let's see if we can't root some people. Now let's kill these guys before they have a chance to kill all of our back line. Upgrade our paladins, they're in trouble. So close. And if our elemental goes down, we can quickly upgrade it and then we'll spawn another one. clinching and we made it wow okay I think that's gonna be it guys that one was a little stressful and we're just at an hour so we're gonna grab that upgrade so I don't forget for next time and next time we will be showcasing Magnus and maybe after we do this next level here which is in a totally new zone the wastes we will be able to unlock even more of these heroes that I haven't had a chance to play with. Someone like Ignis unlocks at stage 11. So it actually tells you stage, uh, this is the first time I've noticed this and that's because this is a new thing for me. So we complete the campaign and we just get these guys. That's awesome. So stage 11 will be, does it, are they numbered? I'm not seeing a number here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Okay, so two levels from now we'll unlock the next guy and we'll be able to show him off. So alright guys, we're at just over an hour. I want to thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. Uh, my channel, Good Talk Gaming, pretty new. I uh, would appreciate any subscriptions, likes, or comments on my videos. I'm trying to get more people to watch them. Um, and once that happens, maybe develop some kind of a pleasant community around these videos and these games. And if you're a new subscriber, tell me what you want to see, if you have any games that you'd like to see on the channel. Um, I haven't really talked about it too much on any of my other videos, so hopefully you're watching this. But I do play a lot of different games. Um, games I've considered for the channel are stuff like XCOM 2. Uh, it's a game that I've beaten, I think, twice now. Uh, Northguard is 
kind of a new RTS game um, that I've been playing since since uh, beta. Um, I've looked at Parkosaurus. It's kind of a, like a roller coaster tycoon esque uh, park building game. And you know, I play a lot of games. I play a lot of different genres. So if any of those sound good to you, or if you have any others that you think I might like, just go ahead and suggest them in the comments section. And I appreciate any feedback. Well, guys, that's it for me today. Uh, I will see you in the next one. I hope you have a good day. Take it easy.